what's going on internet professional asian out here back again with yet another new video today guys i wanted to show you my newest subtle asian car directly imported from north korea this is a 2006 mitsubishi lancer evolution 9 gta and the gta stands for going to applesauce so here's the thing about the car world when you guys think of the term lancer you guys usually think of two things either a, the computerized road-going rally car that can pretty much square up with a regular Lamborghini, or B, an entry-level sedan that's usually driven by some middle-aged dude whose Tinder age filter maxes out at age 18. Today, guys, we have the best of both worlds. On the outside, you have the looks of a very functional and spacious station wagon that can fit bicycles, a couple of boxes, and a lot of rope. But that's not even the good part of this. Everyone knows that Mitsubishi's Evos are an acquired taste. Without looking for the subtle differences that make them stand out from the rest, one can easily slip under the radar undetected. But that's kind of what Evo owners pay for, it's a sort of if you know you know kind of thing. A new Evo back in the day was over 30,000 US dollars, which was just about the starting price of an entry level luxury car from the likes of BMW or Audi. But even though the, the, the road version Evos were like a hot commodity, you barely saw any marketing ads or sales incentives on them. Think about that like um, that one super weird company, Goyard. They're very super high price and they're sold with hardly any marketing at all. They conjure enough weird attraction to the point of where only a few can get their hands on it. And realistically, that's kind of like the same thing with the Evo. It's To everyone else, it's like a nice little economically shaped car, whereas to the car community, it's in essence a pavement folding monster. <laughs> And those pavement folding capabilities were no thanks to this, the original heart of the Evo from day one, which was Mitsubishi's tried and true 4G63 power plant. This is the most modern form of the adaptation and I believe it is the last, since this is an Evo 9. To this day, many Evo enthusiasts believe that the legacy of the Evo ended with the ninth generation period. To this day, you can still see people having raging wars against the debate between the current Evo 10's 4B11 versus the tried and true cast iron 4G63. The only reason I could think of why people are so staunchly defending the 4G6 is staunchly even a real word. But that's not the case here. We have the legendary 4G63 spirit from the first of the ninth gen Evo with us today. And if you're really that deep into the Diamond Mitsu culture, we can't really forget that this engine was also carried in the ultimate street rice car, which was actually an American car, believe it or not. And if you didn't know, that was the Mitsubishi Eclipse. So yeah, this was carried also in the Mitsubishi GSX and respectively the front wheel drive version, which was the Mitsubishi GST. Um, if you wanted to take a step further, if you guys know about DDR Motorsports, they actually had built a quote unquote McLaren F1, which was powered by a 4G63 D stroke to 1.7 liters. And that car was an absolute beast of a machine. One of the special traits that the Evo has, has a lot to do with its transmission configuration. Uh, from its inception, virtually every Evo came with three brake pedals. That is until they started making the GTA, which replaced the three pedals with just two typical stop and go floor buttons. I mean, automatic or not, this car still had the DNA of a long time running rally bred monster. I mean, that car kind of did too back in the day. So I know the Evo is kind of shaped like a hearse, but uh, don't let the shape really fool you. It still has a good amount of minor go fast bits to help keep it relevant by today's standards. So on the floor, we've got a set of Volk RE30s and a square setup at 18 by nine and a half with a 22 offset, along with a square setup for the tire dimensions as well, because I'm pretty sure that I think with all wheel drive cars, it's usually necessary to keep the setup square as to not prematurely wear out the uh, like differentials and transfer case and whatnot. And coming up to the engine, guys, we've got a semi-built 4G63 with an HKS GT2 turbo. This helps the Evo put down uh, to all four wheels a respective 300 wheel horsepower, which is enough for something you want to use for, you know, going on a trail or just hitting up a car show. This isn't exactly one of those high horsepower build Evos with 140 mile per hour trap times and a quarter mile time of like 10 seconds.
not too often you get to see a Lancer wagon or Sportback driving through a village here in Florida. So I figured if I were to be a homeless person one day, one of the most economically ideal cars to own would either be either like ASC TSV wagon, an E63 AMG wagon, or well, one of these things. Let's see just how much space a five foot 10 Asian human being could fit comfortably in the back of an Eagle wagon. Oh, this is actually not that bad. I can actually like have a little wiggle room and he closed the door on me. It, it's it's actually kind of livable. If, if these seats could fold down, I could make this um, a, a temporary mobile residence. Ooh. One of the benefits of having the Evo wagon is the utility that you'll actually have. It's the utility that you'll have more of rather than the ones that you get in the sedan. When you have something like this, you can, you know, you can camp in the back. You can't beat that. So you really could lay down and create a camping session in the back of an Evo 9 wagon. So, moving on from its awesome livable utility space, the car does have a little bit of minor engine work to it, but again, this isn't your typical high horsepower built 9 second Evo, but a rather tame daily driven street car that's just shy north of 300 all wheel horsepower. A car like this won't exactly blow the doors off of probably even a standard 5.0 Mustang, but One's definitely got to appreciate the quote-unquote tacticality of knowing that a couple of thousands of dollars could turn this wagon into a pretty serious street machine. To someone who isn't too keen on Japanese cars, Bubba might not appreciate how his two-valve Mustang just got spanked by a Chinese station wagon. I'm talking about the 4.6 Mustang, the older one, not the 5.0. I know Florida is well known for being the ultimate residence of the rarest Japanese cars in the market, and... It probably sounds like blasphemy to say that I'm already used to seeing every generation of the Skyline on a near daily basis, but don't get me wrong though, I still like the Skyline as much as the next poser, but the Evo isn't exactly a common car to begin with either. And it's been in America for nearly two decades, so when you take the rarest of the rare, you get a formula for something great. What is that formula exactly? I have no clue. I just have to keep running the time up so I can throw at least two more advertisements in this video so I can make some extra money during these bullshit. COVID pandemic times. Uh, what am I also forgetting? Uh, oh yeah, the score. So let's go with a 9.5 out of 10 because this might be the last stateside Evo wagon video for a long time. I right, go. So really quick before I end this video with the Evo 9 wagon, I just want to do a quick shout out to my good buddy Ting over here who was graciously nice enough to let me borrow the Evo uh, wagon for this video. If you guys do want to follow him, links down here below. Mr. JDM himself. Um, he's got another vehicle that I may am going to do another professional Asian video on. It's a secret. It is another Evo, but it's not a Lancer. It's a different type of car. Probably one that you've never seen before. Well, at least stateside. If you guys uh, did watch the video, I do appreciate it. If you guys did like the video, hit the like button. If you guys disliked the video, hit the dislike button. If you guys want your own literally out here merchandise, t-shirts, the website is back up on sale. Or Well, everything's been open. It's just that uh, t-shirts don't cost $5,000 anymore. I didn't really know how to close my website down, so I just made all the t-shirts like 500,000 bucks. Hopefully everyone survived the pandemic okay. I'll see you guys in the next video. Be safe, be good, take care, and don't do drugs. See ya! And that's kind of the same for an Evo. To everyone else, it's a nice little economically sh And that's really... Yeah, but this car definitely has me chuffed to bits. 4B, you can find them in Hyundai's, uh, Chrysler Sebring's, other various Korean sport coupes, uh, a whole bunch of other cars that your mom used to drive. We have the legendary 4G60. But that's not the case here. We have the fledge. Cut. Thank you, Brian Connor. Rest in peace, Paul Walker. Let me do a small segment. Is that a bad girl or a Batman? It's bad. Batman, so that's that's a real Rolex, and there's there's an $89 homage knockoff. <laughs> Compare the two. Look at that. It's actually not that bad for an $80 watch. <laughs> See you guys in the next vid.